Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, wow, wow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, I'm so excited to welcome all of us again to today's special episode of our favorite Good Life Devotion. The Good Life Devotion, as we have been announcing to you, is a daily devotional teaching of the Word of God from Monday through Friday over the weekend and back to Monday on various platforms. And the Good Life Devotion is an avenue that God is using to bring the influence of the final move of the Spirit of God in the church age on the earth. That will bring the body of Christ in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of Jesus Christ unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And to make individual members of the body of Christ very effective in the work of the ministry, so that we can bring many more humans into the fraternity of the God family in Christ. And to also discover the principles of the kingdom that are given to us in Christ to enjoy that great life on this earth. So you're welcome to today's session. This week has been one of the foundational teachings concerning the reality, the existence of God. And we said this message is a great message to anyone of any age, anyone of any religion, because it will clarify doubts and establish you in truth that will change your life forever. Even if you are a child of God born again, as you receive this truth, the reality of God will be more intensified and, and um, um, it will become brighter in you. And it will position you to be able to pray more and reach out to people you know who are confused about the existence of God. So in our previous episode, we looked at the fact that it is easy for any human being of any religion to establish the fact that God is real, even an atheist. And we started mentioning the ways that God made that is Number one is the fact that people are conscious beings. Anybody who grows up to a place of discovering himself as a being that exists already has a pointer to the fact that someone made him. And apart from that, we looked at how God made the ability to know that he is real through nature. Anyone who intelligently, carefully, and honestly observes creation around can never come to a conclusion that there is no God. He would rather realize that God is real. Then we went, I had to look at the third way God made knowing himself easy to men. He has already wired into the fabric of the mankind nature a faculty of the soul that is called the conscience. Remember, I've taught you before 
the four faculties of the soul. The soul is the extension of the human spirit that requires the body to function on the earth. And it's made up of four faculties. We have the mind as a center for reasoning, intellectual activity. We have the desire as a center for affections, passions, and emotions. We have the will as the center for decision making. And then we have the conscience as the center for judgment of good or evil. So in the conscience faculty of the soul, God has wired from childhood people to know good from evil in natural living. And that connects them to God so that they cannot say there's no God. Today we're going to look at another major way that God reveals his reality to anybody. Remember, we've not even come to something about Christ yet. We're dealing with any human being, whether he's a Hindu, a Buddhist, Confucianist, a Muslim, you know, a religious Christian, whatever. A child, an adult, an elderly person, as long as the person is a human. There's a fundamental way God has made knowledge of the fact that he's real to everyone. So nobody will have an excuse to say, oh, I never knew there was God. Are you hearing this? So that fourth way so we are going to look at today. And our topic is God revealed in personal encounters. This amazing way that God shows himself to people is through giving them personal spiritual encounters. That proves that he is. That proves that he is real. So that they can go forward to ask the question, how can I know you, O God? We have testimonies of people in Hindu lands, Islamic lands, um, religious Christian lands, and many places who, when they desired knowledge of truth, they had visions of Jesus. Nobody went there to preach anything to them. Look, people sit down and they wonder and say, oh, um, how can God judge the world? There are villages that have never heard the gospel. There are places that have never heard the gospel. What happens to such people? How is God going to judge them? Don't make any mistake. God is bigger. Yes, it shouldn't make you lazy and say, okay, if God knows how to reach them, then why should we preach? We have a command. And one day I'll show you why the preaching of the gospel is so important. There are people who from childhood have decided against God. Those are people that we must reach. And by the impression of the gospel, we can prevail on them by the Holy Ghost by conviction to change their primary inclination and receive the gospel. There are those that from the time of knowing good and evil decided for God. All they need is a little enlightenment. And even with such a heart, if nobody preaches that there's a way to have this kind of encounters and know the true living God, and if they want, they can receive it. Those are details I'll bring to you in another teaching. So if God orchestrated your path to meet any of those people whose paths were chosen from the beginning of their life by their will for evil, and you never preached God wanted to use you as an intervention in their lives, and you missed it. That's why the preaching of the gospel is so important. When you understand this, you know why Paul said, Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. That is why you read certain portions of the Bible and it looks as if some people were chosen for God and some were not chosen for God. It's because of all these dynamics. But all human beings have the same standing before God. Nobody who misses out on God's eternal kingdom can blame God. But you could contribute to somebody being in the kingdom or somebody not being in the kingdom if you don't act on God's word. And that's why sometimes he requires the people's blood of those that were given the truth. He told the prophet, if I ask you to tell the sinner about his issues and you don't, the sinner will die and be destroyed. But I will require his blood from you. I don't know what that means yet, but I don't want God to require someone's blood from me. And he shouldn't do so about you. 
Right. So God reveals himself in personal encounters. There's a very beautiful story in the scriptures about an ungodly king of the Persian kingdom. I want to say an ungodly king, I mean a king that did not know the true living God. And I want us to take a look at that. It's in the book of Ezra, the first chapter. Let's quickly run there. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. We love you. Manda Oh, thank you, Father. I'll take it from verse 1, but I will try and read it to verse 3 so that you see some interesting thing. I'm reading it from the New and International Version, NIV. It says that, In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm, that's his kingdom, and also to put it in writing. Are you seeing this? Cyrus was not a worshiper of the true living God. He worshipped his gods. But this true living God, the only true God, in his sovereignty moved the heart of this ungodly king in a divine encounter to do something in line with the will of he, the almighty, only true God. When Cyrus did not know him to worship him. Let's go ahead. Verse 2. This is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says. The Lord, the God of heaven. Did you see that? Has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. And he has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Look at his own testimony. Look at his address. The Lord, the God of heaven. He has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. This is so serious when we come to tomorrow's teaching. Cyrus knew that this God was the Lord. He was the God of heaven. He actually knew that his ability to be king of the Persian kingdom came from this God. Look at verse 3. Any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem in Judah and build the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel. The God who is in Jerusalem, and may their God be with them. Did you see that what he said? Any of his people, and may their God. After Cyrus said, the Lord, the God of heaven, and even acknowledged that he was the one that made him king, he excluded himself from being that God's person. I mentioned it yesterday's teaching that there's a difference between knowing that there is God, and knowing that God that there is. This is a typical example. But I'll dwell on that aspect by God's grace in tomorrow's teaching. Today let's focus on God revealing himself to man through his personal divine encounters. Now, it is very important to understand that irrespective of who any human being is, whether he knows the only true God through Jesus, or he's still yet a human he caught up in any kind of religion. Look, there's nothing wrong with anybody being in any religion. Because men are born into communities and continents and nations that already subscribe to certain religions. But there is something wrong when the person remains in that state without knowing the only true God. And that is why Christians, sons of God who are born again, love everyone. And that love makes us to preach to everyone. Many who do not understand and people who are in religious Christianity... They take the thing to be some political thing and some religious thing and people have a lot of contention between this religion, that religion, that religion. That is not God. That is not Jesus-like. Because Jesus is not about a religion. Recently, one of our members was trying to get a good devotion to a certain platform and <laughs> somebody who was uh, supposed to be in link of that said, oh, no, 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 we're not going to um, um, bring Christian content here because... We are into Pan-Africanism and, you know, Christianity and Islam and things have brought poverty to Africa and destroyed Africa and everything. And I was just laughing. He has heard, but he has not investigated what he's saying. Jesus has never brought poverty to any nation. Since ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in that he was rich, yet he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. It's man's selfishness. 
who make men poor. It's men's wickedness who make men poor. Jesus is not responsible for Africa's poverty. Did Jesus tell leaders of a nation who have gold and petroleum to sign consignments and give it to Western people and take only 3% and give about 97% to them? Is, did Jesus tell them to do that? If you have your own people who give your things under imperial contracts and yield their sovereignty to someone else and make you poor, how do you blame Jesus for that? Investigate the cause of poverty around the world and you realize that Jesus is actually the solution that delivers men from poverty. Anyway, that's not our point. But the point here is that no matter who anybody is, God, the sovereign God, because he brought man here for a purpose, is always chasing after man not to get lost out of the radar of knowing him. And when he realizes that a person is not getting to recognize him by knowing that he's a conscious being, he moves forward to begin to draw his attention through nature and creation. If the person is not getting him, he moves forward to begin to work through his conscience. And if the person is still not getting, God moves further to give the people encounters. A lot of people have dreams and they don't take time to analyze their dreams. They don't know that even in their dreams and in some of their trances and visions, God Almighty was trying to draw their attention to the fact that he's real. So that that knowledge that he's real can move them to begin to find out how they can know him. So this king of Persia, King Cyrus, was an ungodly king. We wrote here in the Masbeta that King Cyrus, an ungodly king of the Persian kingdom, did not have any personal relationship with the God of heaven. That's the only true God. I told you, if you read the verse 3 of Ezra 1, he says, anyone who are his people, or who is his person, or, and, and they should go and build for their God. So you can see that Cyrus was clearly communicating that he's not a person of this God. And yet, God gave him an encounter in his heart, moved him to take a decision to build a temple for him in Jerusalem. And he announced it boldly. We put it that, though Cyrus did not know God, yet in a personal encounter, God revealed himself to King Cyrus and even used him to carry out a construction project for his people. There are many times that God used the unbelievers for the sake of his people and the very unbelievers he used never knew him. In fact, God speaks about Pharaoh. That was the king of Egypt during the time of Moses. That he raised him up for that purpose. God used him to demonstrate his might over the gods of Egypt. And the evil influences of darkness over that land. And that thing is known till today in all of history. And that Pharaoh never took time to know that God. In our world today, God can use a non-believer. He say anybody. When sons of God pray and a non-believer is in the position to do something, God can use that person to achieve it. But the fact that God uses that person does not always end up in the fact that the person knows him. But God can give anybody a personal encounter with him. As to whether they will maximize that encounter to know him is left to them. Because God never forces anybody against his will when it comes to choosing to know him. We we'll put it that among the numerous ways that God reveals himself to mankind is the avenue of personal encounters. Some of them are in avenues of dreams, avenues of visions, avenues of trances, and even prophecies. If you go to another example, Genesis chapter 20, there was this king, I think it's King um, um, Abimelech, who was also um, an ungodly king because he was a gentleman. When we say ungodly, we mean somebody who didn't have a relationship uh, with the only true God. Okay? 
So here was King Abimelech, who didn't have a relation, living relationship with God. And Abraham actually um, gave an incorrect information about his wife. And that led Abimelech to try to take Abraham's wife to be his wife. And that could have had a lot of implications on Abraham. But God gave Abimelech an instruction or an encounter. And I'm going to look for that quickly for us in the book of Genesis. Chapter 20. For us. Let me take it from verse 1 so that I can get it. That now Abraham moved on from there into the region of Negev and lived between Kadesh and Shur. For a while he stayed in Gerar. And there Abraham said of his wife, she is my sister. Then Abimelech king of Gerar sent for Sarah and took her. Verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, you are as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. Did you see that? This was the almighty, the only true God with whom Abimelech had no relationship. He was someone worshipping gods and things. And this God manifested to him in a dream and spoke to him and warned him about what not to do and what to do. Abimelech had an encounter with God. But whether Abimelech would subscribe to knowing this God or not was left Abimelech. Are you getting the point in this teaching? So make no mistake about it. God can reveal himself to anybody. But it always depends on the person to decide whether he wants to know that God or not. My time is almost done, but I'm going to go on a short break. On our return, we'll look at how to finish up on this subject matter of God making his reality known to mankind through personal instruction. I'll be right back after this break. This book, Daddy Holy Spirit, is a classic on how to work with the Holy Spirit. Working with the Holy Ghost is very important in being relevant in this final move. And this book is to help get the Holy Spirit restored to his place in our lives as our Father and restored to the church as the Father of the church and to be able to walk with him. And everyone must have a copy. Your life will never be the same. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're just talking about the fact that God in his omnipotence and uh, sovereignty, apart from our, knowing ourselves as conscious beings, nature and conscience, God also makes the fact that he's real to every man being through personal encounters in visions and dreams and all that. If you look at um, something in the book of Job, chapter 33, verse 14, he says that God speaketh once, Yea, twice, yet man perceived it not. So when God tries to get your attention through the day and you don't get it, look at what it does in verse 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instructions, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from him. He kept back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So God interacts with men at very personal revelation levels. But the painful thing is that they don't yield their wills to find out how I can know this God that is making himself known to us. And I believe we are going to have a very nice time in our next episode as we take a look at the difference between knowing that there is God and knowing him. We are going to go deeper. You will understand the challenge and the reason why we preach to people who worship idols, even though they say we know God. We preach to Buddhists, they say we know God. We preach to Muslims, they say we know God. We preach to, why do we do so? Because if it is the same God, then why are we preaching to people to know God again? Many don't understand. We will come there. We put here that with all this we have shared with you, 
It is true that when God says no one has an excuse to say he didn't know that there is God, it is a fact. So we should continually pray that those who say there's no God or who have not yet come into the reality of God will be awakened to truth. Because if know yourself as a conscious being, through nature, through your conscience, and even through dreams and visions, you can come to a conclusion that there is God and find out how to know him. There's no excuse on the day of judgment. Shall we pray briefly for God? Pray for all men, especially atheists, and even those who know there is God but do not know how to know that true living God, that they will come to know there is God and they'll find out how to know him. Shall we pray? Father, once again, I release through these teachings an outpouring of light upon the nations and the hearts of men, the billions of them on this earth. An awakening, a light that will cause them to know that you are. And I will open the door for them to desire to know you in person, even by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. So if you have been watching us, and you have not yet received Jesus. This is the time. Jesus is not the leader of the Christian religion. No. I'll explain that later. Jesus is God's word that took upon the form of a man for the purpose of reconciling mankind to God. That mankind can know the only true God. He died for that purpose. Was buried. He rose again and ascended into heaven. He's Lord of all. If you believe this and declare him as Lord, there will be a transformation in your spirit. That will make you a son of God and bring you to a living relationship with Jesus. This is what you need to say this after me with all your heart. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart, I believe that you died for the sins of mankind and that you were raised from the dead. I declare you Lord of my life and I receive eternal life now into my being. I am born again. Hallelujah. For that is all your heart, truly, are born again. Surely, I'm going to come your way again tomorrow. You can't miss tomorrow's episode. We are going to look at why it is important to preach the gospel of Jesus to people who actually tell you they know God. It is not a matter of trying to indoctrinate people with Westernized religion. No. There's some fundamental, universal truth that everyone needs to know. I'll see you in that episode. Till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Pendan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.